It's oddly satisfying sometimes to just fix things. Don't take it from me, here's another guy who's really into fixing things. Life seems so much simpler when you're fixing things. I revived an old half-finished project of mine to support Wi-Fi control and even the speech recognition, which happens entirely on the device in real time. And this robot can be yours for just... Actually, I'm kind of giving it away, like poor man's version of Mr. Beast. I'll let you know the details later in the video. I built this spider robot in 2019. At the time I had an interesting idea to try reinforcement learning for the robot to learn how to walk on its own without using simulation. A single robot. That didn't work, as in at all. Fast forward to 2024, I was back to Shenzhen for the first time after COVID restrictions were lifted. And I wanted to take some stuff from that gigantic electronic stash that I left when I departed from China in 2021. The spider was there, waiting patiently for me. I looked at it, it looked at me. Okay, that didn't actually happen. I wanted a break of just, you know, sitting and staring at the computer screen all day, so I decided to fix the robot. The microcontroller I used in 2019, the vanilla Arduino Nana, did not have enough PWM pins, to control all the service. But hey, we live in the future now and we have way fancier boards such as Arduino RP2040 Connect and Arduino Nano 33 BLE, which are pin compatible with the original Arduino Nano. That allowed me to ditch the separate server control board and potentially add Wi-Fi control and perhaps even some machine learning stuff. So I put RP2040 in the shield, patched some parts with the glue gun and went on to rewrite the code to support the new control board. It turned out surprisingly difficult because the original author of the robot did not leave the meaningful code for the robot control with Arduino and the remixes were no better. I found one which had code for walking with comments in Portuguese and no wiring instructions. Basically, I had to play a game of guess the correct wiring by watching robot do weird stuff. But it all worked out in the end. And I even added Wi-Fi control with the app. I could have stopped there, but I guess just patching up an old robot did not give me enough satisfaction. And I decided to redo everything from scratch. If you're enjoying the video, give it a like and share it on social media. It really helps the channel and me. I reprinted the robot parts from eSun ABS Plus material. After buying a secondhand printer here in Netherlands, I spent some time looking for a suitable plastic for it. I didn't want the cheapest stuff, but I also didn't want to splurge for premium materials. I'm leaving an affiliate link in the video description for the material I used, because I think it's a good combo of decent quality and affordable price. Feel free to buy there or anywhere else if you find a better deal. After printing everything, it's time to post-process the things. Safety goggles on. Then upload the code to the microcontroller with the servers and install them. It is important to do it in this exact order because the servers need to be in a default position when installing. One thing that I didn't finish last time, and it took me a while this time, is the battery wiring. What you see right now on the screen is not actually correct. It can work, but only to a certain extent. There are eight servers in the robot, and each one of them has about 500 to 750 milliampere's current draw. The small step-up module that you see there is not enough to power all the servers simultaneously. So what you'll need to use is a step-down module and you will need to connect the batteries in series. I will leave very detailed instructions about this part. Now, our P2040 is a dual-core microcontroller, which means that we have one core just sitting there, doing nothing. Unacceptable. I paid for two cores, 
I'm gonna use two cores. We can easily train a keyword spotting model with edge impulse and make it run in the second core, communicating with the first core running server control. For the data set, you can generate synthetic data, as I explained in this video, or you can simply use the part of Google speech commands data set. Either way, to make things easier for you, I shared a link to a public project with a train model. It was sad for me to see so many people struggling with the code or wiring, so I left complete step-by-step -step instructions on Hexter.io and Instructables. If you want to build this, just buy the materials from the list, print it, build it, no hassle or guesswork. If you do like the challenge though, I have some ideas on how to modify the build to either make it cheaper or add some functionality. When shopping on AliExpress, I found this absolutely brilliant thing. An Arduino Uno size board with RP2040 chip on it. It already is combined with a server or sensor shield for just around $9. The only thing you need to keep in mind if choosing this board is that there is no wireless chip on it, so you either have to connect a standalone wireless module or use something like ASP32 Cam, which will make it possible to stream the video from the spider. If you want to go for a cheaper bomb, there is a combination of ESP32 board and ESP32 sensor shield that can be used for dropping replacements that would only cost you around 6 USD for both shield and the board. In any case, if you want to swap the components, the wiring should not change, but you might need to modify the wireless or machine learning code parts. Now, for giveaway, it's really very simple. Let me know in the comments your ideas on how this robot can be improved, both in part of the 3D printed design and electronics. The best submission after one month wins. Read some fine print on where I can realistically send the robot in a sticky comment.